Chapter 2 Interchange of Brides Xavier Leonardi's POV No, I won't marry a low blood like her, I roared. Xavier, please, try and understand. We don't have a choice. We need to make this deal as soon as possible. My mother tried to convince me. She knew that another conflict was going to start between my father and me, and she always tried to form a bridge between us. But I was supposed to marry Valerio's other daughter. Then why did they change the plan? I was frustrated. We don't know, son, why they interchanged brides. But they requested that this marriage will only last for three years, so not a real one. My mother explained in her gentle voice, but I was not in the mood to listen to her. What do you want, Mom? For your business deal, you want to tie me to a low blood. I can't even tolerate standing beside her. You want me to spend my whole life with her. Are you serious, Mom? I threw my hand in frustration and huffed. Son, you have to marry her. This is for my business, and I don't accept a no from you. You are supposed to be in this marriage only for three years. After three years, whether you leave or divorce her, I won't stop you. But for now, to convince board members, we have to put a show in front of them. And I want this merger between Leonardi's and Valerio's, my father said indifferently. He was void of any emotion. He was a great businessman, but not a good parent. He never cared for my feelings. Only because of him, I was what I was today. He made me a ruthless and heartless man. I also felt no emotion in my heart. He made me just like him. But I wouldn't let him spoil my life and use me as an asset to make a business deal. Dad, what about your reputation? What will people say if you make a low-blood whore like her your daughter-in-law? Aren't you afraid that people will look at you lowly? I snickered. Mind your language, son and you should know that people don't bother about anything but money and power. This deal will give us both money and as much power as we want. Our name in the business world will become larger than life, so it won't hurt to make a girl like her our daughter-in-law for three years. You should also keep this in mind, that you have to be in this marriage for the whole three years. I don't bargain, my father said with a bored expression. Dad, I won't marry her because I don't have any plans to get married in the near future. Sorry, Dad, I won't spoil my reputation just for your business deal, I said in a mocking tone, and began to leave the room. I can't bear it more to stand there and listen to their nonsense. Listen, son, if you leave this room, I will disown you, and you won't get a single penny from my property. You will also lose every right over the Leonardi Empire. The choice is yours, son. Go and live a life like you want, or marry her and rule the world like a king. He raised his voice in a threatening way, making me halt in my steps. I closed my eyes and clenched my fists as anger was rising in my heart. I wanted to punch something so badly. I took a deep breath and turned to face him. Okay, Dad, I will marry her, I said, firmly looking into his eyes. Good choice, son. I will start preparing for your marriage. You may leave now. He turned and pulled out his phone from his pocket and started punching some numbers. I could not hear him, because I left the room immediately. Maybe he was in a hurry to make all the arrangements for my marriage. My life was fucked up, as my soon-to-be wife was going to be Mia Valerio. I had heard so much about Mia Valerio. She was Antonio Valerio's, the head of Valerio Industries, second daughter. I had also heard that she used to sleep around, and that she was the dark spot on the name of the Valerio family. That's why they always treated her like a servant. I was promised to marry Valerio's elder daughter, Cara Valerio, but I didn't know what happened in between, and my bride was switched. Now I have to marry Mia Valerio. God, I was so screwed. How could I survive to live with a whore like her, she was not even worthy of being my slave. A girl like her should never cross the boundary of Leonardi's mansion. But here she was going to live in Leonardi's mansion as their daughter-in-law for three fucking years. Hell. She was ugly and uneducated, as the Valerio family did not take proper care of her because of her mother. They said her mother was also a bitch, and that's why Antonio Valerio left her. 
and married Kara's mother. I had no idea what three whole years would be with a girl like Mia Valerio. I will make your life a living hell. Welcome to hell, Mia Valerio. Mia's POV. It was dinner time, and I hurried to the dining table and put all the dishes in their places. All the members of the Valerio family were about to come down. If they found dinner late, I would be in great trouble. Shit. I hissed when the hot curry spilled over my hand, and the red color due to the burn appeared. It hurt like hell, but I had so many things to take care of rather than my own burnt wound. I always had to make food according to everyone's choice, as everyone used to have different meals for dinner. My sister Kara needed salad and fruit with vegetable soup, and she was always on a diet. My stepmother Andrea wanted egg curry and rice, and for my father, I needed to make some healthy food as he was a heart patient. The wall clock chimed, indicating they would be here any time. I threw a glance over the dining table and made sure that everything was present there and in its right place. The sound of footsteps diverted my attention. I slowly moved my head towards the staircase. Kara and her mother were climbing down, and they were chatting with each other about something. They looked at me, and a scowl appeared on their faces. I was used to this kind of reaction. Behind them, my father was descending down. They all came and took their seats. In the center, my father took the chair, and Andrea sat on his left, while Kara sat on his right side. I stood there, waiting for the next instructions. They all filled up their plates with their favorite food and started eating. My stomach growled in hunger at the smell of the food. I closed my mouth to stop myself drooling over a delicious meal. I had to wait till dinner was over. Whatever leftovers would be there, I had to feed on that only. I was grateful to them that they had given me shelter to stay and food to eat. Finally, dinner was over, and there was so much food left on the table. My stomach growled again in pleasure of having so much leftover food. Today, I could eat my fill. I quickly cleared the table and put the plates in the basin, washed them with water, and got them in the dishwasher. I piled up the food on a plate and got settled in a corner in the kitchen. I was about to start eating, when I heard someone calling my name. Mia, come to my room, quickly. I heard my stepmother, Andrea, calling me. I looked at my plate and placed a hand over my hungry stomach. I sighed and covered my plate and put it on the slab. I have to go immediately, otherwise there would be consequences of not obeying my stepmother. I can't afford to disobey her. I hurried and rushed towards Andrea's room. I knocked on the door and opened the door quietly. I peeked inside and saw my half-sister, Kara, my stepmother, Andrea, and my father were sitting inside and discussing something serious, as their expressions were cold and indifferent. Mia, please come inside, my father said in his cold voice. I came inside slowly, bending my head down, because I was not allowed to look into their eyes. My father came in front of me and said, I have fixed your marriage, and you are going to get married in seven days to Xavier Leonardi. What? What? 